Hey guys, in this video we are going to be learning everything you need to know about your digital painting projects and easy ways to make any image honestly look like it was painted with a real brush. I have four examples of my own that I've been working on that I think are now done that I want to share with you. So zoom in as I kind of like scroll down and go over them. Uh, so this kind of like samurai looking warrior here is one. Um, but if we really zoom in, hopefully that'll give you, oh, it's not zooming, it's, can I not zoom in more? There we go. This will give you a really good view of what this will look like when it prints. These can print pretty large, so all this little texture around here, you'll actually really see. So, there is one. Now, let's see if I can zoom out correctly. Okay. So, on to the next one. Instead of a fictional person, I have Pedro Pascal here, uh, and I'll do a zoom in on him as well so you can see some of the texture. Something I learned, he was one of my more recent ones, is if you see over the nose right here, I go back in at the end and add these large brushstroke effects, and that way uh, I definitely don't lose that stroke texture uh, with everything, so, um, but, there's another portrait example. And we have two landscapes. So this is landscape number one right here. Completely fictional place created out of the AI generator, which I'll be going over in a little bit. Also added this knight kind of character just to put something in the landscape. Don't, you will not have to. And then last but not least, uh, downtown, I think this is Kyoto. Um, a real place straight off of Google Images here. Uh, the texture in here, I guess I didn't do the last landscape, but get the point. And you can see all that really, really cool brush texture. Uh, in the less focal pointy area, you probably should go bigger with the brush strokes. And then as we hit, like, you know, closer detail, they can be a little bit more minute. I mean, you can, I'm way more zoomed in now than, you know, you would ever be, but it's kind of like uh, where it goes to. And again, this is just done right over a photo, so I expect this project to be on the very easy end. All right, let's back out. So I'm going to go ahead and chuck these four images here. Oh, I haven't showed you how to delete anything yet. I recommend that you keep your laptops really clean of, you know, excess data. So when you're done with the file and it's on Schoology or what have you, take them. Uh, I have them all selected at once. Ready? I click, drag. They're all selected now. And I'm going to throw them into this trash can. Once they're in the trash can, if I click with two fingers, you'll see an option called empty trash. And hit that and then just verify it. And there you go. Keeps your computer free of storage. All right. The first thing that you're going to need, even before we look at images, is going to be on Schoology. Now, I apologize. This is in like the teacher resources, but you'll find on your Schoology class a digital painting folder. And within there will be various videos and assignments that you'll have to submit to. Uh, I don't have them yet, but the one thing that I do have is the most important. Uh, this is um, a history brush set from a website called Texture Labs. You're going to want to download this file. This really makes the project what it is. So I'm going to click on it once. I'm going to hit allow because I do want to allow Schoology to download them. And if I could go to where my downloads are in Safari, up here in the top right where it says show downloads, you'll see that I have the file. What I want to do just for ease of importing this to Photoshop is click and drag this onto the desktop. Then I can clear it out of my downloads. Move it over there just to make it look nice. Um, unfortunately, you would think that you can install by just double clicking this file. It doesn't work that way. Um, we'll get into that in a hot moment, but make sure that you download this and just put it on your desktop for right now. Should look just like mine right there. All right, images. You'll be creating one landscape and one portrait. Uh, the landscape here for me, I've chosen just to get it right off of Google Images. Now again, what I searched up here on Google Images, after I searched it, I went to Tools, Size, Large. So let me do that again for you guys. Tools, over here in Google Images, you'll see Size, and then you'll see Large. Because then what you can do is any of these images, this is the one that I had right here, when you click on the little thumbnail, again, do not save the little thumbnail. Then here is the proper image. You can click with two fingers and you'll see save image as. After you hit save image as, 
where, uh, let me change that to desktop. We're just always gonna save on desktop. Then you can name it. Uh, we'll name it Nova S-C-O-T-I-A, Scotia, save. And you'll see it just added directly right there on my desktop. You can move them up, keep it clean. All right, next one. Uh, you could do a portrait from here as well. So I could look for an image of a person, you know, a face. Uh, I think I did what a portrait of, uh, what was it, Pedro Pascal? And there we go, bunch of Pedro Pascals. So, but I would also just want to double check that with tools, size, large. And then that way I only have legitimate photos. Anywho, AI. So I went to playground.ai.com and in here, uh, in the top right, there was a create button. I hit create, I just wanna show you my settings. Model, I use stable, that's the default stable diffusion. I made the dimensions taller, I thought that would be better for like a person. If it was a landscape, I would have swapped it to this one right here. Um, that would have made it wider, like a wide rectangle. Prompt guidance, leave that at seven, that's the default. Quality, I think 30 is a really good happy medium for that. Don't touch the seed thing. Uh, number of images to generate at the same time, I always like four. And then over here on the left, filter, I tried a couple different ones. Um, I think I started with Protogen, and then I did uh, Dream Shaper, I think, and then I, I settled on Protogen Photo Realism uh, 3.4. I guess there is also a 5.3, but anyway. Um, I'll show you some that I created. Uh, oh, my prompt. So this is how you write your prompts. Um, when you write a prompt, you want to separate little thoughts by commas. So I wanted to go for kind of like this more like ancient kind of mystical person. So put a comma there, describe what kind of clothing they're wearing. Uh, in, in particular, wanted to go for some kind of like jewelry or whatnot. Background, at first I was not getting good backgrounds, so what I did was I put these little brackets or parentheses, I guess I mean. Um, that emphasizes it, saying like, hey, this is really important. Um, and then last but not least, I would always add trending on ArtStation. Siri, stop. Look at Siri going, man. No. <laughs> All right. Tr trending on ArtStation. Um, that just gives you kind of like more stylistic results. Uh, it, it's based off this website called ArtStation and that has a lot of like concept artists and whatnot, the graphic design oriented things. All right, uh, I didn't exclude anything from that one. So uh, scrolling down, thought this one was really cool. Uh, I thought this one was pretty cool. I liked this one too. Um, this is, I, I, I don't like the face of this one, but I liked that glow around the back. This is the coolest one that I got, in my opinion, was right here. So I'm going to do two things with it with you guys, and we'll see what we get live. So under Actions, anytime you do this, I would recommend it. Anytime you like something, do a Create Variance. Um, that way, it'll generate up here at the top of my list. But that way, you get to see if there's something slightly better out there. Um, we'll wait, you know, maybe edit this in post. Okay. The faces are more detailed. Oh, this is pretty striking. This is striking too. I like both of those. Don't like these. Um, hmm. I'm gonna go this one, yeah. Okay, so now that I like this one, oh, this is still uploading? Yikers. Are they all still uploading? Ah, wonderful. Okay, well. While this one uploads, let me show you what to do with one. I'll go back down to my base one right here. Under Actions, you're going to find Upscale by 4K. Make sure that you hit that, and it'll upscale it. This will give you a much better resolution photo. I think by default, like 700 by 500 is pretty small. This is going to give you something you know closer to what our print sizes are. Then hit Download. I like to go into my downloads and move it over to the desktop. Again, just to clear it, just to keep things nice and clean. Uh, let's go back to that other one and see if that one finished up. Eesh, it's still, that's still uploading. All right, well, we'll get back to this. I'll leave this site up. Um, we'll go get our file set up maybe with the Nova Scotia one for right now, and then I'll come back to here. All right, so Photoshop and getting that set up. 
Uh, you're going to want to open up Adobe Photoshop. Right here is the blue PS. Hopefully we put this on our taskbar by now. In Photoshop, this is what our home screen looks like. As you work on projects, you'll see them kind of like pop in down here. Up here in the top left is new file, blue button. We're going to want to hit that for right now. In new file, um, all these things on the left, it's going to look different than mine. Do not worry about them. These are either past sizes that you've used or custom sizes recommended by Photoshop. Uh, since we're printing all of our projects, it's very particular that you worry about this stuff over here on the right. Untitled 1, you can name your project whatever you want. I will be calling this Digital Painting Example. Um, you could do something as you wish. Uh, right here is the dimensions of your file size, which might by default go to pixels. Pixels are really, really tiny dots. We want inches. Uh, orientation. Um, we'll get to this in just a second, but this will make your file taller. This will make it wider, whichever one is blue. So you want width 18 and height 12. Again, make sure that's inches. Then you got to think about your image that you're going to use. Is it taller or is it wider? I really wanted that portrait off of uh, the, one, the AI one that I just generated. So I'm going to hit the tall one and you'll see that it swaps the um, height to 18 and the width 12. All right, resolution, 300. Uh, by default, sometimes you might see that at 72. That's if you're making something for a website. We're printing our designs. So put that at 300 to get a like better quality file. Color mode, um, for certain ones, uh, ideally we use CMYK. Uh, sometimes though, that will interfere with different filters that we're doing. Uh, we're not gonna be doing filters on this project. So CMYK would be good. On the projects that we do filters, RGB, uh, is probably what we'll need. All right, background contents white, leave that at 8-bit. All this down here, honestly, don't worry about it. Just kind of let it be what it, whatever it is. And then you can hit the blue create button right down below. All right, so now you are looking at a white blank space. Since this is hopefully our first project, I want to go over resetting the user interface. So let me go ahead and do that real quick. Actually, I want everybody to do this just in case. So up at the top of the screen, you're going to see window. After you click window, I want you to hover over, not click on, but hover over workspace. Then I want you to look for reset essentials right here. Okay. And then click on reset essentials should now make your user interface look exactly like mine. We're going to do a couple things together. The first one is this top left or top right little part. We don't need anything in here. So this little button is like the menu button for this section. Click it, and at the very bottom, you'll see Close Tab Group. Go ahead and do that. We do need layers and we do need properties. I, we need more layers than we do properties though. So if you hover over in between them, you'll see your arrow changes to like an up and down arrow. Click and drag and make layers noticeably bigger. Something like that I think looks good. Um, everything on the tools is good over here, and we are ready. Something you can do, I think, is, yes, let's try this. Window, workspace, new workspace. Yeah, and what that'll do is it'll save this. So I'm just going to call this digital design, and then I'm going to hit save. Now, if anything happens, you hit weird stuff on your computer, you can go window, workspace, and you will see digital design as one of these that you can select up here. That will bring you exactly to the interface that we need for really honestly the rest of this course. All right, let's hop back to here. Oh my gosh, it's still uploading. It's done, it's stuck. Can I, uh, I don't wanna save it to my photos. Uh, save it my jazz. Um, pre, P-R-I-E-S, Priestess. All right, let's see if that worked and if the quality is good enough. All right, so uh, moving Photoshop over and whatnot. Ready? This is Adobe Photoshop 2023 right here. If you click and drag a little to the left, you can kind of get a peek at your desktop. So in here, uh, I'm going to go portrait first. We'll uh, landscape we can do later. I'm going to click and drag this image in, and then I'm going to let go. Now, it looks massively pixelated, but we're going to do two things to it. I'm going to increase it. So see how the box around the image is right there right now? 
If you go over the top right, you're going to see that your cursor changes to like a diagonal arrow. Click and drag. And then I'm going to move down here. Oh, this. See how I'm kind of like swiping around right now? What this does is it, you know, just moves uh, your image around so you can kind of see it. Um, how I'm doing that? I'm hold or just placing two fingers down on my trackpad and I'm kind of swiping around. So you can swivel it around. I'm going to click and drag down here. Now, it looks massively pixelated, but ready? Watch this. Hit the return key. Not bad, right? Does a little auto bump of quality for us. Uh, I don't really need my desktop anymore at the moment, so I'm going to shimmy Photoshop back over, try to get it back into full screen. All right, cool. There we go. All right, importing brushes. This will be our next section. Um, what you want to do is we can click, or the tool that we're going to use is the art history brush right here. Uh, you'll find it where I am right now, right there in particular. But I think, or no, actually, yeah, when you click on that tool, art history brush, you'll see that the top part of Photoshop changes with some stuff. The thing that you're really looking for, there'll be a number and a dot. The number might not be my number and it honestly doesn't matter. Click on this little down arrow right here. That brings up like your brush window. I already have these brushes imported. But let me show you how to do that. Where you see this little cog wheel right here, you can click on that. Then under there, you will find import brushes. Click on that. After import brushes, you're gonna get a pop-up window that you can kind of move around. Um, over on the left, you will find desktop. And again, we're gonna save everything on desktop for the whole course, just to keep things simple. You're gonna see texture labs. That's the .abr Adobe brush something file right there. Click on it once and then hit open. You'll see that it added it. Now I have a duplicate right here. I don't need both. I think if I click with two fingers, can I delete it? I guess not. Interesting. Well, I'll figure out how to delete them later, huh? Is there a delete brush in here? Delete group. Perfect. Yes, get, get out of here. All right, so here's your folder right here. This little arrow next to it. If you hit it, that'll open it up. There's a total of five brushes in here, and we're gonna literally work from brush one to two to three to four to five, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and select brush one right now. By clicking on it, it turned blue. How do we get rid of this window? Well, just double click it and the window goes away. Uh-oh, I can't brush. What is going, oh wow, that actually, no way did that actually just set it up ourselves here. I've been doing something different the whole time. Okay, so let me hit cancel. Let me show you a little bit about this first, uh, and then we'll explain what that was. Over here is our layer of our character or your landscape. This little icon next to like the preview thumbnail is a smart object. They're really high quality, but they're not editable. Obviously, we want to edit this. But before I even really edit this image, I want to duplicate this layer in case something goes wrong. So we have the original. So what you want to do is you want this layer selected. And you can tell Priestess is selected and not background right now because it's light gray. And you'll see this little box around the image or the like thumb, thumbnail preview. Ready? Watch the difference. Background is selected. Priestess is selected. While it's selected, hold down the command key on your keyboard and tap the letter J as in jello. And you'll see that it makes a copy. We're going to work off the copy just to keep things safer. All right. Um, now, we don't want this to be a smart object. I found out by just clicking right here, you can remove it. But I want to teach you guys the more, the better way, just in case that doesn't come up for you. Two finger click on the layer itself. See where my icon is right now, that little hand? Two finger click, and you're going to get this massive list. Like you can literally scroll down. About halfway down, you're going to find an option called rasterize layer right there. Click that. Now you'll see that this does not have a smart image anymore. So this is fully editable. Um, to my knowledge, though, the brush will not work, right? If I go over it, do you see how it's like all white and everything like that? I don't want that. It's not working yet. So here's how you make the art history brush work. And this is where I think this thing gets crazy. Up here in your user interface is this little button. This is called a history. Let me expand this down. This has every step that you've done since you've opened the file in it. So if you ever make a mistake, you can always go back. What you want to do is go to the last step that we've done. Ignore these last two because I just deleted them. 
and you want to click this little box right here and it puts this brush at this point. I can close my history now and now if I take this brush tool, you see how it's like actually using the colors there? I'm going to undo that. Uh, the reason why is I recommend that we zoom out for this and we take a bigger brush. Learning more new things, ready? The best way to zoom out. There are a lot. You can look them up on your own. But the best way is hold down Command, tap the minus key. It'll zoom you out once. If you hold down Command and you tap plus, that'll zoom you in. If you do it again, it'll further zoom you in. If you hold minus, it'll further zoom you out. I like being zoomed out for this part. Now this little icon that's kind of moving around the screen, that's our brush right here. You can make it bigger, you can make it smaller. The long way to do that is go into the brush settings at the top and you can use this slider or this numerical number right here. But the way that I prefer to do it on your keyboard, kind of towards the top right, you will find two brackets. They're next to the letter P key. The left bracket, when you tap it, let me move my brush over here, makes your brush smaller every time you tap it. The right bracket makes it bigger, okay? So what I recommend is you start with a pretty big boy brush right here and you click and hold and you swipe all over the photo. You might be thinking, okay, we just ruined it. And yeah, kind of, but we, we, we need to do that. After you make this brush huge, make it smaller. And then go back over kind of where the character was a little bit and you'll see more refined paint splatters. And again, you're not quite seeing the character yet, but we are seeing more color in this part. All right, there we go. We're done with brush one. You wanna change the brush. Another cool way to change the brush is click with two fingers directly inside the image and you'll get this window. Now we just wanna to go to brush two, which is noodles. This is probably the coolest one, I think. So with noodles, I wouldn't change the size at all right now very quickly just kind of draw around the character just kind of keep hovering keep your finger held down on the trackpad and just draw around the character you don't have to go everywhere but just hit up kind of the mainstays we'll go over there now i'm going to zoom in so tap plus a couple times and we're going to move over to the face i'm going to decrease the brush size so left bracket about three times and i'm going to Draw a little bit more at certain points. I want that necklace to stand out. So pick where are some places that you're like, I want a little bit more detail in here. I like that part of the garb, hands, this belt. Okay, there we go. Now, moving on. Two finger click again, and we're gonna go to medium. Now medium, uh, it's it's not that more detailed than the noodles one um it's so much so watch if i go over it kind of blurs it what i would recommend that you do with medium is use this to kind of soften some of the sides where your character hits the background and just kind of go around your character with this one but i wouldn't really go on your character with this one and this way it'll get you more detailed brush strokes in the background but won't mess up your character now that halo thing that was around her i want to bring that back i'm actually going to go back to noodles you can kind of ignore what i'm doing right now and just draw that back in and you'll see that pops back in cool all right after you're done with medium by just softening some of the outsides small and fine this takes a while but man do they make a difference so a small you gotta like really zoom in. You can pinch and pull on the trackpad to zoom in. That's what I just did. It can be a bad habit though. Making my brush tinier. And again, this will take a while. Uh, I'll either skip ahead in the video or something. But you're really gonna go over like all of your character while with this about. But definitely do like their facial features if it's a character. landscape for this um just areas of importance and you'll see the last one i only recommend specific facial features for so it won't take as long as this one but here i am just kind of going around adding more detail to cool parts of her clothing
All right, poof. Now that we're done that, now we are on the last brush. Two finger click and go to the number five one, fine. So fine starts out really small. They probably can make it a little bit bigger, but don't make it that much bigger. I'm gonna hit this like twice. See up here, 30. Don't go bigger than that. It'll really make things weird. You can zoom far in and you can really get into like eye, nose, mouth, hair, uh, eyelashes, and ready? Look at the difference right there. So hit up the key points of the face with this one. Uh, again, don't go bigger than 30. It really looks bad if you do. Um, you can you can go smaller. You could go down to like 15. Uh, that takes a little bit longer. Um, I've been finding that 25, 30 is the good number. But yeah, look at the difference right there. Like I can see the nose now. Here we go with the mouth. And uh, just to ch touch up the, like, the cheek and the jawline. A little bit of that. Anywhere else too that you want just some quick refinement. Just don't go, don't leave it over too long, but just kind of like tap it a little bit. And I think that'll look cool. About there, and maybe like the hands belt area. There we go. Notice that part was looking a little rough. Uh, if you're doing a landscape, the biggest advice I can give you with this thing is use the number five brush where your focal points are, like where you want people to look uh, first. All right, let's zoom out. Let's get our full image. That looks really cool. All right, ready? The original AI artwork, digital painting version. So uh, we only have a couple more things to do to this, and they're easy. They're pretty fast. And they really make a lot of difference on this, okay? So over here in the bottom right are all these different, like, layer settings. I can go more into them later. Um, actually, I'm, I'm going to in the video. Maybe in class I'll skip over this. The trash can will delete the layer that you're currently on. This plus sign right here will make a brand new empty layer with nothing on it. The folder, you can then kind of like create a folder and throw layers into the folder. For projects that we're using a lot of layers, this is a good idea. This like half circle is image adjustments, and we're going to be using that in just a second. This one right here will we'll do layer masks. Very, very important feature of Photoshop. Um, maybe I think the most important. We're going to get into that um, in a future project for sure, many of them. FX is like special effects. Um, I personally only use this on fonts. Uh, just I haven't really ever liked using these on raw image layers. And this one here, if you have more than one layer selected, will link different layers together so that if you do or move one layer, the other one moves with it. We are actually going to use that this year, I think. Normally, I never use that thing. Anyway, this guy, the circle that's like split diagonally. Click on that, and... Um, there's a bunch of them in here. The ones that are the best, in my opinion, are brightness, contrast. I always do it before I finish pretty much anything I'm working on. And the other one that I like a lot is color balance. So let's start with brightness, contrast, because it's just easy. Click on it, and you will see the properties tab up here that we have in the top right will change. Brightness is up to you. You slide the slider down, darker, go up, brighter. I kind of don't mind where it is, maybe a little bit brighter. Now, contrast. Watch, when you move that thing up, and then you can kind of adjust brightness to like where you think looks cooler. I'm gonna show you before after. I promise you that you'll like the after. Ready? Before, after. Always nice, just bumps it up. All right, the other one that we, we wanna do, you actually want to go back to your copy layer right here. So it makes a layer with brightness contrast, and these eyeballs, that's what I was doing with the on off feature. The eyeball, if the eyeball is not there, it's hidden. If it is there, it's shown. Select the priestess copy or whatever your person is, and then, yeah, that one. And then you're going to go back down to this button right here, the diagonal circle, and you are looking for color balance right here. Um, if you don't like these, don't worry about it, but it is worth playing around with. Um, first things first, where it says tone, 
If you click on midtones, you'll also see that you have shadows and highlights to mess with. Kind of watch what I'm doing. I'm gonna go, yeah, I'm gonna go more in the red territory here. Maybe I won't. Maybe I'll go blues for midtones. Yeah. Then for shadows, this is a lot of guess and check, in all honesty. I don't like that. I do like that. And then highlights. I I almost always like bumping up yellow for highlight. I feel like I've never not done yellow. There we go. All right, let's see what that looks like before, after. Just a little more saturated. I like it. All right, um, optional. If you don't like color balance, just turn it off before you submit the file. All right, and now we are done. Uh, saving files. Ready? I, hopefully I went over this before, but we're going to do two kinds of saves. We're going to do one to the cloud and one for Schoology. For cloud, file, and you're going to see save as right up here. After you hit save as, you'll, you should see this window pop up right here. Um, if it doesn't say that, let me uh, hit no. Okay, let's try this again. Okay. Um, hmm. I wonder if it changed in the recent one. Anyway, when you do hit this, see if it says saved creative cloud. That's what I would recommend doing first. If it doesn't, I want you to look at the bottom left, and it might say creative cloud down here. Then you can hit it. You'll see how mine says on computer. I don't want that just yet. So right there, there's my file name, and I'm going to hit save. Cloud saving is great because if you don't finish something, you can access it from any computer. You can tell that this is cloud saved because it has a little cloud icon above it. See that cloud icon right there? Ta-da. Um, now, however, when you're done a project and you want to upload it to Schoology, you can't upload a cloud file to Schoology. So here's how we have to do it again. You're going to go File, and you're going to do Save As. But this time, you're going to save it directly to your computer. So hit On Your Computer. After you do that, the first thing that you want to change, see where it says where right here? Make sure that that says desktop. You can name the file whatever you want, but make sure that it has a .psd at the end of it, okay? Uh, format, Photoshop, leave everything else okay, and hit save. After you do that, this is just saying, hey, do you want the good quality? Yeah, hit okay. Wait for it to actually save. If I close out of Photoshop now, uh, let me delete my extra little files that I had up here. I'll swipe them down and delete. You'll see that I have a .psd file right there. If you go into a Schoology assignment and you hit um, submit assignment, you can literally click and drag this file into the submission box and you're done. All right, good job guys, first project.